Hello and welcome to this tutorial and today we're going to be talking about Race Studio 3 analysis. This tutorial is making up a series that we've created based upon the fact that the new Race Studio 3 analysis software went into production a couple of weeks ago. Throughout the tutorial we've been looking at certain features and we're going to continue the conversation today by focusing on the split times report. Earlier on in some of the tutorials, and we'll link to, to them in many places, some in the description, some in the top right hand side uh, of this particular video, we looked at being able to create your own segments as part of the particular track. And if we move to Race Studio 3 now, we can see that I've created um, segments here for Silverstone National that allow me to be able to understand where I am and what I'm doing in each of those particular corners. Then as we went through the tutorials, we looked at how does that relate to a track map? And we looked at how was I doing, for example, here in the cops corner, looking at aspects such as speed and, and, and acceleration going through that particular corner itself. But one of the things that I like to be able to do when I've segmented the track is be able to look at certain aspects such as how was I doing in terms of consistency? Um, how would I sort of fare if I wanted to create a um, theoretical best lap? And so that's what we're going to have a look at in today's sort of uh, analysis. So as part of this user profile, we have the time distance and the track, but we're going to add a third component now, which is going to be this button here. It's called the split times report. And if I click on this here, what it's going to do is it's going to take all of these segments I have here that I've created and then saved, and it's going to show me the every lap broken down into each of those particular segments. And so you can see that uh, based upon this, I can see um, certain key aspects of how I've done in each of those corners. Just like Race Studio 2 analysis, it shows me best rolling lap, which was if I piece together my three best segments. And it also shows me what my best theoretical lap would be based upon the best performance over each of those segments from all of the laps that I ran. And so I ran a 104.6, but had I got all my segments right, I would have run a 104.1. So there's a half a second in there for me to be able to find that time. Now, unlike Race Studio 2 analysis, Race Studio 3 analysis has an opportunity of being able to show you a lot more information associated with your performance on track. And so, as we can see on the right hand side here, I've got a lot of information um, in relation to how I've done. And so, depending on how much uh, screen size I've got, I can move this around here and I can start looking at how I did in each of those segments. And so, my personal favorite sort of view is this one at the top. This view here is probably one of the most useful for being able to analyze all of your laps together to be able to see how consistent you were. But that's also available in terms of different aspects, as in these different uh, charts show you um, sort of key pieces of information, such as um, a sort of a graphical view in terms of, of how consistent you were. The least sort of movement here demonstrates how close the lines are together. The further apart they are shows how inconsistent they are. So lap four, uh, and lap 11 weren't particularly good laps uh, compared to laps 5 through to 10. And you can see that in relation to the lap time. And then this is really breaking down a segment analysis. So, um, for example, if I were to pick Luffield here, you can see that uh, things are a little bit different. In fact, probably if I picked uh, Brooklands, that's a little bit more consistent here. You can see how close they are. But if we get into Luffield, the lines open up. These get a little bit more jagged in terms of how much distance I ran and the time through that particular corner. And so it breaks that segment down to be able to analyze further. You will always have your track map as well down here to be able to show what your line looked like through those corners. And then you can start to understand how to use this. Now, these buttons up here allow you to be able to decide which ones of these you want to be able to feature. So, for example, if I wanted to be able to turn off the time view, I just click that button. If I want to turn off the distance view, it turns off that button. The time over distance, it turns that one off as well. And so this just allows me to be able to see that um, each of these together, how I did through that segment in a graphical view. Now, this is my personal favorite view. This is what I have for my user profiles. But again, customize it for however you want to be able to use that. Because the moment you run up here and you click on this little button, keeping that discipline alive, if you click on save profile, that's just going to save how you've set it up for how you want to be able to analyze that data. I actually want to be able to see a little bit more of the graph, so if, uh, uh, the map down at the bottom. So if I move that up, I can now see my performance through there. And so this means that if I picked the Wellington straight, you can see that I do a pretty consistent job in a straight line. What it does show, however, is that my performance through the beginning part of the lap is better than at the end where it's a little bit inconsistent in terms of lap time going into that particular corner. 
that's something to be able to potentially pay attention to. So that's the view that you have over here. And then you've got this nice view of being able to look at the information associated with each of the segments in more of a tabular format. Now, if you're somebody like me who likes visual representation of things, some of the stuff you can do is to work with some of these buttons up here. And so uh, you can change what you see based upon clicking each of these. This is my favorite button. If I click here, you will see these colored based upon performance. And so if you are faster, it will be in a lighter gr a green and a stronger green. If you are slower, it transitions to a yellow, into an orange, into a red. And so you can see that consistency there based upon the deviation um, of each of the splits, even though these numbers are relatively close, because of the variation between each of them, interestingly, relatively inconsistent going down um, the straightaway, which may be indicative of the corner before, something to be able to pay attention to. You can also click this so it shows up in this format as well, which for some is an easier way to be able to see that information uh, represented. Uh, for me, if I were going to focus on anything through here, I'd probably switch off this first lap because that messes with the information that is there. I don't have the in-lap engage, which is good. And it just tells me how I'm doing through each of those particular areas. So that allows me to see that information that way. I can turn on and off if I want to this information at the bottom that gives me the median values and the best theoretical and the maximum and the minimum. This is useful if you just want to be able to see the standard deviation through each of the particular segments. I've noticed that Brooklyn's, for example, has the most amount of deviation between the laps itself. And you can see that because we've also got a lot of inconsistency in terms of the um, uh, the lap time there. I'm surprised it's actually not Nuffield here that even though it's potentially the ugliest in relation to the split of the laps here, it actually doesn't have a huge amount of difference and make a material difference on the lap time itself. Now we're not getting into analysis. I have a tendency to do that, getting into analysis as soon as we look at it. But I just wanted to be able to demonstrate the wonderful um, sort of features of the split times report. Other things that you could do here, you can click on this button and it changes it um, based upon um, the distance uh, fractional split times. So each of them will add up to the full lap time. So if it's six seconds through clubs, 14 seconds through club, 23 seconds, it all adds up to the cumulative of your lap time that you have. Um, and you can also change it so you can represent each of the um, uh, sort of the differences between each of the sessions itself and what the variance is in terms of the laps are. But this one, as you can see, makes it hard to be able to see. So I oftentimes don't use that one. I like to be able to use um, the more detailed view. Now, the last thing I clicked on here, it gives you a lot more information um, in relation to the distance that you've traveled through each of those segments. And so if I click on these and I bring back the information that we want to be able to see, you can see sort of each segment broken down into um, how long it took you to get through the segment, how much time in terms of distance. It also tells sort of graphically represented in terms of colors, the conditional formatting, and it also shows you with the red um, squares your best running lap. And so a lot of ways to view the data. I personally get to the point where I feel like it gets a bit um, uh, clumsy to be able to look at, but that's just how I personally like to be able to view it. So I like it a little bit simpler. But again, all I need to do is come up here, click Save Profile, and it remembers how I want to be able to see it uh, going forward. And so that's the split times report. So one of the things I will say on this tutorial is that the success of your split times report is really dictated by how comfortable you are with the segments you've created at the beginning. If, for example, you set up uh, or use the standard segments that come from AIM where it says, here's a right-hand turn, here's a left-hand turn, here's a straight, and you're doing a huge track like Spa, for example, or you're doing Kota, or depending on wherever you are, chances are you may end up with 20 plus segments. And then when it comes down to analyzing as a driver, can you exactly remember where section 17 was or corner you know, uh, 13 was? It gets hard to remember. So how you segment those tracks is really important. So we'll make sure that's linked in the description below. And at the beginning of this video, we actually link to that uh, um, sort of track segmentation video as well. So with that, I'll end this tutorial. I'll say thanks so much for watching. If you like it, please give a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe um, to see more of these sort of videos. And thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it.